Welcome to the Revenge of the Drive-In commentary track for Goldfinger. And those custard stands, if you go like uh, to an urban area. <laughs> custard stands. What are you guys doing in Wisconsin? What's weird about that? There's fucking root beer stands. What? In, in places. Stands like like a, like a little. You know how you have like a taco truck? Yeah. It's it's like that, but it's just more permanent than that. It's not like a full on restaurant, really, where you can like sit down. Uh, but okay. It's like yeah. Listen, I'll believe a, you. I'll... I'll believe you. I've never, you know, I'm not sure what you guys are doing in Wisconsin, but that's fine. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm all on board. You know, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure Sean Connery had his share of frozen custard before making. Um, fuck, I, I'm screwing up the joke. But what's the <laughs> Never Say Never Again? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he did. But here, dude, he's looking slim and trim and sexy as ever. This is my. F- yeah. Whenever I think of James Bond, this is the opening that I think of. This is the bond that i think of wearing that white suit and red card yeah the white tux the white tux is iconic remember when but they what an did iconic this? image it, oh it is i remember when they did this but poorly in quantum of solace with oil yeah that that was poorly it was like a, you know the bond series i think for the most part the daniel craig movies did a fantastic job of being nostalgic but not overly referential you know, they yeah. bring back the classic car in Skyfall. They have a few nods within Skyfall. I, you know, whether it is or not, I think that Komodo Dragon eating someone in Skyfall, that's a classic throwback to the dumb, the shark scenes and all these oh, it's uh, Bond be. movies and stuff. And um, they had, there's other things too, but like, for the most part, they did it really well without hitting you over the head with like, we are referencing this thing. I know you weren't a huge fan of it, but even I'll say No Time to Die, and it's on Her Majesty's Secret Service qualities. I thought that was well yeah. done, but the quantum of solace, that's that's a swing and a miss right there. The uh, the oil, the oil drowning or whatever, the oil yeah. suffocation. Well, you know, you know what I think the problem is. Like, I think the problem with the James Bond series is that you're selling tickets to a movie that people have seen before, essentially, right? Like, yeah. you're selling tickets to a spy thriller action movie where the good guy wins at the end of the day. So. With the newer Daniel Craig movies, I thought like Casino Royale was fantastic. I thought it was a fantastic movie. Mm-hmm. But with all the other ones, they kind of Casino started Royale leaning is in. truly a reimagination of yes. the character, yeah. reimagining. Yeah, exactly. The other ones, I think, maybe after Quantum of Solace, because Quantum of Solace is weird. It's like a revenge movie. It's it's like a direct sequel to Casino Royale, which is very unusual for the series. I think maybe after that they eased off a little bit on the reimagining of the character and he slowly and slowly became more like the James Bonds we've seen. I think, you know, the movies are good, Daniel Craig is good, so that didn't bother me too much, but I think if I was a, you know, not a huge James Bond fan and the newer movies kind of frustrated me and I loved Casino Royale, I think I'd probably be disappointed by the direction some of those sequels went. Yeah, or even like you know, like even ju- even just the small things, like bringing in a male M and giving him that like mahogany leather padded door. Yeah. <laughs> like I I remember that because I remember those from the James Bond movies when I was a kid, even when I wasn't sure which movies I was watching when I didn't know much about them. I'm like, oh, there's always that door. And then yeah. in um, I think it's the end of Skyfall. Maybe it's not until Spectre. But he's, he's, you know, M's got that door, and it's like, okay, you know. He pulls over. He's like, oh, yes, Auric, this giant factory in the middle of nowhere with the bad guy's name on it. I think this is it. Also, it's his first name, but I guess Goldfinger Enterprises just sounds weird because that Goldfinger isn't a real last name, obviously. Like, that no. would just sound weird as a, as a person's name. Isn't, is it AU is the chemical symbol for gold? Yes. I remember when Clever I was a writers. kid... The university that I would eventually get my master's at, Marquette, had this. So, so, you know, you know about the American sports controversy over like Native American names and stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Marquette way back when, and I don't know how long ago this was, they were the Marquette Warriors. But my entire life, they've been the Marquette Golden Eagles. So they changed sometime 
probably in the 90s or the 80s, but there was always an attachment with the alumni of really liking the Warriors name. And of course, the logo was like a Native American warrior, which I think you could go back to the Warriors name and just not have Native Americans as part of your symbol, have like a Greek warrior yeah, or something. Yeah. And I don't think anyone would. That to me seems like a perfect compromise. But Marquette University had like some kind of poll with alumni, like, would you like to see a name change? And the vote was like overwhelmingly yes. But they didn't specify what would you like the name changed to. So Marquette just thought the problem was with the nickname Golden Eagles. So they changed the name briefly to the Marquette Gold. What? They never performed. They never played a game, I don't think, under that name. But I remember and it was because it was laughed at when they introduced it <laughs> i remember because there's the big the big marquette chant at like basketball games and stuff is like we are mu and the joke was it's going to be now we are au because <laughs> of gold so that's uh, that's how that's i remember good. that au is the chemical symbol for gold <laughs> is this taylor swift's private plane Ugh. <laughs> did you hear about that when there was some uh this is probably six months ago but there was like some release data of like which celebrities private planes had flown the most and then people were attacking those people for like you know the devastating effects on climate change or something taylor swift was like the most surprising one everyone else was like huge ass billionaire who needs to go to a bunch of places and then it's just like taylor swift like what the, f- <laughs> the fuck is she doing why is she flying uh, <laughs> why is she flying several thousand miles a day i don't know classic T and then, swift and then and then her team comes out and says, oh, no, no, it, it's not Taylor Swift herself. She rents out the private plane. Like, that doesn't make it better. If, no, if yeah. the problem is how much the plane flies, it doesn't matter <laughs> who's in the plane. <laughs> you know, it's Taylor Swift owns the plane. So, Dude, Speaking of planes, I got home from work last night, and there was like a May Day series. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh thing on so they just showed like you know 50 episodes of mayday in a row <laughs> what's mayday i was gonna say do you know what i'm talking about yeah so mayday no. is a show about plane crashes so you start <laughs> off and it's just like the plane crashes and it's then, like snuff films <laughs> no, no, well sort of but not really but like it's all based like it's all mini documentaries about how these planes crash or why these planes crashed or whatever it yeah. sounds like the famous alan partridge crash bang wallop what a video <laughs> the, um, the, um. the television special he did on um, car crashes <laughs> but yeah May Day it's a great show it's just all about plane crashes and what caused them and it's on the Discovery Channel here in Canada and uh, which is less about Discovery and more about like finding gold on an island off the coast of eastern Canada or whatever bullshit that they play now that sounds like Discovery to me well, me- now remember- who wouldn't go to see Pussy Galore's flying circus <laughs> i was That's about a... to say yeah so exciting